Hello everyone, Jake here with Unreal RPG Mastery. In this video, we are going to learn about gameplay tags and how we can use them. So what are gameplay tags? Gameplay tags are conceptual, hierarchical labels with user-defined names. These tags can have any number of hierarchical levels separated by the period character. For example, a gameplay tag with three levels take the form of item.weapon.sort with item being the broadest identifier in the hierarchy and sword being the most specific. So to add gameplay tags to your project, you can go to Edit, Project Settings, and select Gameplay Tags. So here, if Import Tag from Config is true, we can just add new gameplay tags here. But if you make this false, you can no longer add gameplay tags that way. I'm going to go ahead and make that true, and this option can be used to add new gameplay tags to any existing gameplay tag .any files. As you can see here, we have our source, default gameplay tags .any. I'm going to go ahead and add some example gameplay tags. This will add the gameplay tags to the default gameplay tags .any file. So that's like the parent tag, and then parent dot child and see here under parent we have parent.child and so this is just an example of how tags can be hierarchical labels once you have added some gameplay tags to your default gameplay tags.any you can open up the config file and look at your gameplay tags by selecting config default gameplay tags and here you can see some gameplay tags that we've added here is the parent tag and the child tag that we added and if you want to remove them you can just highlight them and delete them. Then after you delete them, you just close the project and open it again. Another way you can add gameplay tags to your project is with a gameplay tag table list. I've already created one for this project, so I just need to select it. And so whenever I select that, all the gameplay tags that I created now show up. And inside of this gameplay tag table list, I've created some example gameplay tags. Here I have item.consumable.healthpotion, item.consumable.monopotion, I have item.weapon.axe and item.weapon.sort. We can use these tags to see if an object has a tag. For example, if you want to check if an object is an item, you could check if it has the item tag. In that case, I don't care if the item is a weapon or a consumable, I just want to know if it is an item. But if I want something more specific, I can query based on more specific tags like item.weapon or item.weapon.axe. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to create a gameplay tag table list. So here I'm going to create a new one, and we're going to create new asset, data table. I'm going to call this one example gameplay tag list. Okay, and for the row structure, just search for gameplay tag. And we need the gameplay tag table row. Select OK. OK, and now open it up. And here you can add new tags. Example tag. So this is just your row name. And here is the actual gameplay tag. So I'm just going to make this one example.tag just for demonstration purposes. Let's go back to project settings. As you can see, the example.tag does not show up. So we have to clear it and then set it again. And now it shows up example.tag. Now I'm going to show you some examples of how you can use gameplay tags in your project. Okay, so I have an example here. Whenever I press the tab key, I'm going to do some checks with gameplay tags. And if it's true, it passes. If it's false, it fails. So, okay, so this variable here is a gameplay tag container, which means that it can contain multiple gameplay tags. As you can see there, it has multiple gameplay tags. But you can also have gameplay tag, and you can add here gameplay tag, which is just a single tag. So a single gameplay tag can only have one gameplay tag at a time, and a gameplay tag container can have multiple gameplay tags at a time. But most of the time, you're probably going to be using the gameplay tag container. So I'm going to drag out from the gameplay tag container, and you can check as tag. So this will check, does this gameplay tag container have this tag? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the tag container variable here, and I'm going to add item.weapon.axe. OK, 
Okay, now we want to check, does this gameplay tag have item.weapon.x? Now this should be true because we just added it here. As you can see, it prints pass. And these tags do not need to be an exact match. So it'll still pass even if it is item.weapon. So the tag container variable has item.weapon.x, but it'll still be true if we just check for item.weapon. As you can see, that's a pass. And we can also just check for item. That will also be a pass. But if exact match is true, this will now be a fail because we do not have the exact tag item. We have item.weapon.x. We do not have the exact tag item.weapon. As you can see, this will fail. We have item.weapon.x, and this should pass. So as you can see, if the boolean is true, the tag has to be exactly present. But if it is false, the tag container will include its parent tags while matching. And you can also call as any tags. And from here, you can just make literal gameplay tag container. And this is going to check, does it have any of these tags? So item.weapon, that's going to be pass. Item.consumable. That's going to be a pass. And the reason why it's going to pass is because this checks if it has any tags. And so even though it does not have item.consumable, it has item.weapon, and so this passes. If you were to remove item.weapon and just add item.health potion and item.mana potion, this will fail. But if we add item.weapon, this should pass because we do have item.weapon in our tag container variable. And you can also set that to exact match for this one as well. And this one will be fail, because we do not have any of these tags exactly. We have item.weapon.x. And now it should pass. As you can see, it prints pass. So this will be true if this tag container has any of these tags from this other container. And then you can call it has all tags. So now the other tag container must have all the tags in this tag container variable. And so this will fail. The only way that this is going to pass is if all of these tags are inside of this one. So item.weapon.x, item.weapon.health potion. Let's go ahead and print that. This will still fail. But if I add item.weapon.mana potion, so now it has all the same amount of tags and this should pass. That passes. But even if this one here that we're checking, if we only check item.weapon and item.consumable both, this will still pass. And since we include parent tags, then all of the tags do match. Item.weapon and item.consumable are both present here. All the parent tags match. But if we make this exact, it's going to fail because these tags aren't here exactly. We would have to modify this to check for mana potion, health potion, and X if we want this to pass with the exact match true. And as you can see, it passes. Okay, and in this example, I'm doing a lot of different checks. So I have the tag container variable here, and I'm checking, does this tag container have the item.weapon tag? And I have exact match to true, but I do not have item.weapon in here exact, so this is going to be false. I check, does tag container variable have all of the tags from the other tag container? And as you can see, item.weapon.ax is there, item.consumable.health potion is there, but item.weapon.staff is not there, so this will be false and have a not boolean so if any of these are false this will become true and then i check has any tags so are any of these tags present in the tag container variable this will be true because item.weapon.axe is there and item.consumable.health potion is also there and so the result of these checks should be a pass and as you can see it prints pass so you can see how you can do a lot of different checks based on gameplay tags and do different things based on what is inside of a gameplay tag container. Now another thing that you can do to make these kinds of tests and checks be more data driven is use a gameplay tag query. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable and search for tag query, gameplay tag query. I'm going to call this one example tag query. And here in the gameplay tag query, we can have a root expression. 
as you can see, we have a, a bunch of different options here. All tags match. This succeeds if there are no tags in the query that are not also found in the container. So basically all tags in the query must match what we are testing. And we have no tags match. This succeeds if there are no tags that match. And these can also be combined together. So you can see all expressions match, any expressions match, and no expressions match. So first I'm gonna try all tags match. And so this is pretty much the same as what we have here as all tags. We're gonna check item.consumable.healthpotion, item.weapon.x. And this should be true. Does container match tag query? And just plug that in here like this. And this should be true. Okay, that passes. Okay, if we add something that's not there, like staff, this will now fail. As you can see, it fails. So as you can see, it works just the same as has all tags. Okay, and we also have all expressions match, which is basically like the singular expressions, but you can have multiple of them. And if all of these expressions, like um, any tags match, all tags match, no tags match, if all of these expressions pass, then this will pass and the tag query will pass. This just allows you to have a more data-driven way to do checks. So you can have here a variable with a bunch of expressions based on tags, and it'll either pass or fail based on the expressions that you have here. So, and so now I'm gonna show you some more practical examples. The practical examples that I'm gonna show you is going to be through some example items that I created. So I created a bunch of different items, a sword item, axe item, enchanted sword, magic staff, melee staff, health potion, and mana potion. And so we're gonna do checks based on these items. And this is just an array of default items. And on begin play, I just equip all of those items. And once equipped, I just add them to an array of spawned items. So I created an, an example function here, filter equipped items by tags, in which I just get the spawned items array and I loop through it. And I check, does the item tag container variable contain all the tags in the input tag container variable here? If it does, I add it to a local array and then once it's completed, I return that. And this will basically allow us to do things like this. So I'm gonna call filter equipped items by tags. And let's say you want to query all items. Well, what I'm gonna do is for each loop. And I'm going to go ahead and print string. And I'm gonna print each one. Mana Potion, Health Potion, Melee Staff, Magic Staff, Enchanted Sword, Axe Item, and Sword Item. So it prints all the items that are equipped, but if I make that item.consumable, now it's only gonna get Mana Potion and Health Potion. And if I select item.consumable and item.weapon, this will return nothing because there are no items that are consumables and weapons. As you can see, it returned nothing. But if I remove consumable, now it will return all weapons equipped, melee staff, magic staff, enhanced sword, axe item, sword item. If I want to return all axes, I can do that. And this will return the axe. If I want to return all staffs, I can do that, which will re return both the melee staff and the magic staff. And I can also make this a little bit more specific if I want to only get the magic staff, I can add magic there. And now I only get the magic staff. If I only want to get the melee staff, I can select melee and I only get the melee staff. And this can also be useful for like enchanted swords. So let's say you have item.weapon.sword. I'm gonna go ahead and return all swords that I have equipped. And right now I have the enchanted sword equipped and the sword item equipped. But if I make this melee, now it's only going to return the melee weapon. So those are both melee weapons. But if I specify magic, and there should be only one magic sword, which is the enchanted sword. As you can see there, it only prints the enchanted sword because that's the only sword that I have equipped that is enchanted with magic. So as you can see, gameplay tags can be very useful, but there are a few things in gameplay tags that you don't have access to in blueprints. So on begin play, it's gonna equip the enchanted sword and store that as an example item. And so now I'm gonna get the example item and gonna as matching 
gameplay tag. So these are functions that are built into the engine. Okay, and now this one should have item.weapon.sword. So let's go ahead and see what happens whenever I do this. As you can see, that fails. That fails even though I have item.weapon.sword added to the gameplay tag container for the enchanted sword. And the reason why this is failing is because you need to implement the gameplay tag asset interface in C++. There are a lot of other functions too. Has all matching gameplay tags. Any matching gameplay tags. And these are similar to the functions that we were calling earlier, except these are through the gameplay tag asset interface. So in order to get this working, you actually have to implement the gameplay tag asset interface in C++. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. You're gonna to need to have C++ in your project. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go to tools, new C++ class. Um, this will be an actor class. Next, I'm gonna call this one base gameplay tag actor. And this is just an example to show you how to set this up in C++. And go ahead and select create class. Okay, now the C++ class is were created. It created base gameplay tag actor.cbp and base gameplay tag actor.h. In this video, we are mainly going to be working in the header file, which is the file that ends in .h. But before we edit this file at all, we need to open up our build.cs file, which is going to be the project name.build.cs. So go ahead and open that up. And here under public dependency module names, we need to add a comma, in quotes, gameplay tags, and type it exactly like that. And now just to make sure it works, let's go ahead and compile. So you, so you can compile either by selecting build and then build solution or control shift B. Okay, compile was successful. Let's go back to the gameplay tag actor.h. Now we need to add a few includes. So here under gameplay framework slash actor.h, let's add hashtag include quote gameplay tag container.h. Okay, now we need to add another one, hashtag include game play asset interface dot h. And here where it says u class class and right beside public actor, add a comma and then type in public i game play tag asset interface. Okay. Now here in the first public section, let's add our gameplay tag variable. So go ahead and type in all caps, U property, edit anywhere, blueprint, read, write, category equal gameplay tags. And this will be type F gameplay tag container. And I'll call this one owned gameplay tags. Okay, now here in the second public section, type in virtual void get owned gameplay tags f gameplay tag container tag container const override. Tag container equals owned gameplay tags. Semicolon and return semicolon. Okay. Okay, and so make sure that you top in everything exact because if you make a mistake, you will get a compile error. And it looks like I made a mistake here. I topped in gameplay asset interface. It is gameplay tag asset interface. And if that's wrong, this will not be recognized, and this function also will not be recognized. So now that should fix it. The red squiggly lines are still there because IntelliSense is trying to catch up. And also make sure that you don't forget your semicolons and that you spell everything correctly exactly the way I did here. Okay, everything looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and compile. Okay, everything compiled successfully. You can go ahead and close your project if you want to and then reopen it. That's what I'm going to do. And you can press Control F5 to build and then open. So now that we created that C++ class, you can see it shows up here, the, the base gameplay tag actor. And that is a similar process for any object that you want to 
implement the gameplay tag as an interface into. And if you are a Blueprint programmer, you can get away with only doing that once. Because we created the base gameplay tag actor, and you can just reparent any of your Blueprint actors to the C++ base gameplay tag actor. So any Blueprint actor classes that you want to use gameplay tags, you just reparent to this C++ actor. And from the name of this, we know that we're not going to implement any other functionality inside of this base actor. This is only for adding gameplay tags to other Blueprint actor classes. And doing it this way will just help Blueprint programmers to not have to write much C++. So what you can do is, now that you've already written the C++ out, you can just open up the base class for your actor that you want to use gameplay tags, hit class settings, and go ahead and reparent. Search for gameplay tag, actor. And so now this is a child of base gameplay tag actor. And we now have, we should now have a new variable. There we go, owned gameplay tags. And that is the variable that we set up in C++. Now I can go ahead and delete the tag container variable, but I'm gonna go ahead and update my gameplay tags first before I do that. Okay, so I've went through and updated all of my gameplay tags in the child classes. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this now. Let's go back to the character blueprint. We should have some compile errors. Okay, so now I've replaced it, all the references to the gameplay tag variable with the gameplay tag asset interface, as you can see. And everything should work the same. And this should also now work, by the way. This check here, which let's go ahead and test that out and see what happens. As you can see, it passes. So that's working successfully. And this is really useful for when you don't have a direct reference to your item. So I know here I have direct references to the items, but let's say, for example, you just have an actor reference. So I'm gonna make the example item an actor. Change variable type. And I'm gonna set that. So now all we have is a actor reference. We do not have a direct reference to the item actor. And so what that will allow you to do is you can run those functions. So let's get example item. And here we're gonna check does example item have item.weapon.sword, which it should because we're spawning the enchanted sword and yes, it passes. This passes even though we only have a reference to the actor. If we didn't have this gameplay tag as an interface, we would have to cast to item actor. And from the item actor, you would have to get owned gameplay tags. And so that would just add another cast but using this interface will be a lot easier on references because you can just use a standard actor and you can check, does it have a tag? And you can check, has any matching gameplay tags, has all matching gameplay tags, and you can also get owned gameplay tags if you need to do different things with the gameplay tags. That brings us to the end of this video. In this video, you learned what gameplay tags are and how you can use them. You also learned how you can add them to your project and how to implement the gameplay tag asset interface in C++ and use it in blueprints. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.